Man versus Gun. Hello shooters, today's man versus gun handgun installment is the Colt Officer's Model 1911. This was this came out in like 1985. Uh, it's the smallest, uh, up to that point it was the smallest reliable uh, 1911 that was manufactured. So let's, let's put it through the man versus gun pace and see how it does. Alright, Officer's 1911. Let's see how much this puppy weighs. It weighs two pounds, one ounces, so that's going to be 33 ounces. To put that in perspective, let's see what our Glock 17 weighs and how many rounds it's going to take to equal the officer's model. So a Glock plus 16 rounds equals the same amount as the officer's model does empty. Okay, let's do the width on the officer's model. The widest part on the officer's is right there at the grips. And it is 1.270. So it's 1911s are nice and thin. That gives it a, 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 a 4 with regard to thin. Uh, the weight puts it down to a 3 because it's a heavy little puppy. Um, this is small for a service-sized handgun. Um, it does get a little bit higher marks for a concealed carry handgun, but since it's heavy, it won't get full marks as a concealed carry handgun. And it's just too dang heavy to be con and too big to be considered a pocket gun. Receiver is made out of steel. Um, the back strap, which is what we're calling the, uh, the, the grip safety and the mainspring housing, that's what we're considering to be the back strap on a 1911. Uh, you can get a different mainspring housing, but on this 1911, without altering the frame right here, you can't get another kind of beaver tail. You're stuck with this one. And it's not the best design on the beaver tail. This is not super fun to shoot because it's got this little thin part here that just kind of hits you right in the back of the hand when it shoots. Um, side panels, there's a bajillion different side panels you can get for 1911s. Although this is an officer's model, so there won't be quite as many as you can for the full size uh, uh, frame on the 1911. But it does get some more marks because you can get different uh, thicknesses of uh, stocks here for an officer's model. Trigger pull on this officer's model is um, it's a little bit heavy, but it's not bad at all. It's around five and a half pounds. One thing about a 1911 trigger is it will be the exact same every time, all the time. Um, reset, if that means something to you, is pretty short. And you can feel it. The magazine well is flared on two sides on the officer's model. It's not flared on the front, nor is it flared on the back. The magazine is not one hand malfunction friendly at all as you can see there's just absolutely nothing here to grab onto if you have a malfunction you gotta strip the mag out um, you can get different uh, officers model magazines with different floor plates with different floor plates but you know from what it came from Colt which is what we're looking at it is not uh, malfunction friendly with the magazines there magazine seating is okay it does it does go in farther than, than it snags. It's got a little bit of pushback, but I didn't give it full marks for magazine seating because it's it's difficult to really get that mag seed there because the frame comes down. There's no, it should have, the magazine should have a little bit fatter floor plate so it aids in insertion. When it's flush with the bottom of the firearm like that, it makes it, makes it harder to insert. The magazine release is in a great location. Um, right behind the trigger guard where it belongs. It, uh, it's checkered steel. 
it is only on one side. It is not mirror image, nor is it reversible. The safety on this officer's model is like a just a basic stock 1911. It's not extended, um, so it, it, it doesn't feel as good in the hand as the newer safeties do or the ones from more customized models. Um, but it is in a good spot and it is positive and it works well. And the, uh, the safety is only on one side. You can get other safeties that um, are ambidextrous or mirror image actually. But on the basic stock, what you come out of the store with on a Colt officer's model, it's one side only. The rear sight is old school technology. Um, it's not, but you know what? It's better than some of the newer sights because notice that it's got that nice shelf there. So you're able to uh, hit that against your belt buckle or your shoe or the door jam or the steering wheel and manipulate that slide one-handed if you had to. The front sight is uh, okay. It doesn't get super high marks because it's not dovetailed. It's, it, if it was dovetailed, it'd give it higher marks because it's easier to switch out with aftermarket sights. This actually has a post that runs through the slide and it's kind of beat on the back of the slide to stop it from coming out. So that is that is the old school sight there also. There's no light rail on this and there is no provision for optics on this. So let's uh, let's take it out to the range and put a few rounds through it. This is not a fun gun to shoot. The lack of a decent beaver tail and that little safety slam into the hand every time you pull the trigger. Um, this is a gun that if you own it, you probably don't shoot it very much. I wouldn't shoot it very much if I owned one of these. Uh, definitely needs some, some work to it if I was going to carry it. But it's too heavy too. It's old school technology. It still does the job if that's what you've got, but boy, there's sure better choices out there. Okay, as I mentioned in the, the shooting part there, it's, it, it's an older school 1911. It doesn't have the full beaver tail, so it's not quite as comfortable to fire as the newer type 1911s, but it is uh, it is a quite small, concealable, 45 ACP 1911 style handgun. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.